I just to took a, tooth, uh, a toothbrush yeah. and I was putting the, the real toothbrush into the virtual toothbrush holder and check if it can fit in. This is Renaz Arbaila for InnoMind.org. Today we are at the exhibition of 3D printing inside or what is it called? Inside 3D printing, right? Before we were outside 3D printing and today we happen to be inside and I'm talking to this gentleman here from Hungary of all places and this is Daniel of Leonardo DiCaprio in Co I'm just kidding. This is Leonardo, the invention. He's the original inventor of Leonardo and we're gonna have some questions about this particular product. Hi Daniel, how are you? Hi, nice, thank you. All right, so tell me about Leonardo. What is Leonardo and why did you decide to make this you know, product or service? What is this? So Leonardo is basically a tool which creates a full virtual reality. Uh, on, on that I mean that uh, you know the computer is a two-dimensional environment, 2D flat monitor, 2D mouse, right. but with Leonardo we can turn this whole thing into a three-dimensional environment. So we got a 3D uh, glasses, mm -hmm. We got a 3D input device. This is what how uh, we call this uh, bird. Like you know, in 2D we got the mouse. In 3D we got the bird. Nice. And with that, uh, you have a totally three-dimensional environment. You can uh, you can draw in 3D, sculpt in 3D, animate in 3D, play in 3D. So uh, anything you can imagine. Uh, simply the, the computer's environment turns into a 3D environment. I see. Where can this be used? Is this a pra practical product where you can apply it to, let's say, I don't know, designing or sculpting some kind of object? It depends on the application. So we got, for example, a sculpting application. Uh, is this the one? Uh, yes, yes, here you can uh, do sculpting, uh, but also you can do animations, you can make 3D presentations, uh, but also there is a company made uh, a facial recon reconstruction application for the, uh, for the tool, so they, they are uh, making operations with, with, with Leonardo. Uh, others uh, are teaching uh, welding with Leonardo. So it, this is a, a basic tool, a platform tool, like the mouse itself, so you can, you can use the mouse itself itself for a lot of application areas. Uh, here it's the same situation but you have the whole thing in 3D. I see. How long ago did you invent this particular product? The company was established 2005 uh, and uh, unfortunately I could uh, win several uh, awards with that and, uh, and you know later just governmental grants are, were, were coming, venture capital were coming, mm -hmm. uh, the product development started in 2007. And, and that's what, where we are now. So we, we already have the full virtual reality uh, product. Are there any uh, real life companies using this particular approach, perhaps in Europe? Yeah, sure. So for example, this welding company uh, or, or this facial reconstruction, these are true examples. Is that welding company? Yes, yes. So uh, they, are, they teach how to weld uh, the... the uh, oh, so yeah, it's before the, the students can actually use the real objects, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but also in the animation industry, uh, you know, you can make uh, 3D models he here even in seconds. So you can make 3D models faster than you can make a sketch on a paper. And uh, this for an animator, it just uh, matters a lot. Uh, but, uh, you know, also there are a lot of uh, universities all around the world, in, here in the University of Iowa, but in Tokyo, in Germany, etc. So all over the world uh, we, have, uh, we have sold Leonardo's and fortunately we are, we are growing. So how expensive is this? Is this a package? Is this basically how the box looks like? The virtual reality kit? Yes. All right. How expensive is this for, I don't know, a firm to acquire in order to use this? We have several packages. The basic starts at 500 bucks, uh, and so it's 500 bucks to $2,000. And what comes with the... Uh, you know, in that 500. Uh, in the 500 uh, bucks, you have already the whole hardware package, mm -hmm. and you have the SDK and the API, so you can make your own application for the system or use use any any type of Leonardo applications. Right. Does uh, software come with that package? Uh, the this software that I've sh uh, shown here, mm -hmm. it's how do you the, call it? Uh, this is Low World. What is it called? The Low World, World. 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 Yes, like the world. world. Yes. Right, yeah. right. I see. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and so it comes free with that package, you're saying? It's no, it, it comes together with the hardware uh, kit uh, and with the Low World application, so where you can do the animation, the modeling, etc. Uh, it's about a thousand bucks. Oh, so with the application, it's a thousand dollars. Yes. Without, it's five hundred. Just the hardware. Yes. I see. Now, all right. Now, um, where do you see this going? In terms of, let's say, five years from now or so, you know, where do you do you find your company to be? 
how high are you aiming in, in other words well we can get any highs i think i believe uh, so uh, you know uh, our natural environment is three dimensional uh, but we are using two dimensional tools in our everyday life so i i believe that uh, very very soon uh, all, in, in all of our hands there will be three dimensional uh, devices uh, so our aim is that uh, our tool will uh, would uh, be um, um, you know, a pioneering solution in this revolution. So the 3D interaction, the 3D visualization, it's it's coming. It's it's uh, it's. Uh, I think it's it's obvious. But uh, but to really make a virtual reality, that's the that's the challenge. And I think uh, we are making groundbreaking work. Could you give me a, a small tour of how your software and hardware works together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So you have to wear you have to wear these 3D glasses basically, right? And the bird, as you call it, which has basically controls like a, you know one of those gaming systems, right? Well, it controls exactly like uh, it would be a 3D mouse. So I have a direct cursor into the space, mm -hmm. uh, but those sensors are tracking not just the position of the bird, but also the position of the glasses. So therefore, if I put my head into the object, I really bang it with my head. If I see the left, right side, it really feels like it would be a real object. And this is very, very necessary because if you are in interaction in the space, not just want to see, for example, a 3D movie, but you're really working on something, yeah. it, it matters a lot that, uh, uh, do you really feel what's going on there in 3D or just have you, or you just have more or less uh, something in 3D? So let's suppose you, you, you want to make something out of this software, the world, as you call it, right? Yeah, like just create something. What do you do? Yeah, like what do you do? For example, does here. it compete with SketchUp? You know the SketchUp from Google and well, other software. I make something and you can tell. Okay. Ah, let's see. So for here, for example, I grab this tool, and I make a nose. Just put in some oh, ears. So it, it automatically doubles this the other side. Is that? Yeah, is I turned it? on the symmetry. So therefore, symmetry, right. it's very very easily. I just can put on. You know, because I'm, I have a 3D input device and not a 2D, therefore immediately I can go there and push the, the surface right there when, when I want it to be. So just put there the mouth, let it smile, we are happy. <laughs> You're an artist too, just Have like Leonardo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Was that the inspiration, Leonardo da Vinci? Uh, well, actually, it's uh, my father's idea was to to call the to the call it Leonardo? Le yes, but, but I, I didn't like that with my brother. But we put there the, the free, right, right. and look at that! <laughs> in two seconds, you made the yes. What, what do you call this? This is like a. I this don't is know. the boss in the Mario's game, right? Yeah, for example. <laughs> you can, but you, you can create anything and really in seconds. And you know, it's, it's, it's totally a working 3D object. You can print it out, you can animate it, you can, you can paint it, you can do whatever you wish to. And, and I created this faster than I could make a sketch on a paper. That's true. So, and it's 3D too. Now, what is that screen? I see you have two screens here. This is yeah. 3D apparently. Yeah. And what is that? Yeah, uh, this is where we demonstrate our low capture application. Uh, this works in a way that uh, you, you, there you can see that there's a, a standard web camera, webcam. Webcam. Yes, uh -huh. a standard webcam. And the webcam, uh, it's views, views in the front of this monitor, and in real time it can uh, uh, photo montage or uh, put an augmented reality image uh, of the virtual reality scene, what you can see here. So whatever I'm creating here, it's automatically, it can be captured and shown to the audience. It actually shows in real 3D. Yeah, yeah it, it shows to, to those who doesn't have 3D glasses. You can put this video onto the YouTube or, or share with each other that how you create anything in 3D. And, and this uh, this why we uh, took here this, here this technology. That for example, if some uh, interested people like you, for example, coming here and, and you can point your camera here and, and it's easier to, uh, to explain uh, how, how, yes, how how it works. I see. I see there are kind of graphs here, like split resolution 20% and things of that mm -hmm. nature. So this is basically the editing environment, right? Yep. What uh, file formats can you export it to? You can use OBJ, STL and 3DS file formats. So the basic file formats you can uh, import and export. So it's totally compatible with, with any, any other uh, CAD software or, or, or modeling. As AutoCAD? Uh, can you export to AutoCAD? Yes, yeah, sure. You can use it together with AutoCAD. But you also can use scanned data and you can uh, also uh, export this to a 3D printer. So it's totally compatible. Oh, so you can actually export it to a 3D printer right off the software. You don't, you don't even need to have intermediate 
it software or anything like that, right? Yeah, I do this all the time because, for example, at home... You print things on in 3D? Yes, I, at home I, I have a 3D printer. What kind? Uh, this is a, a 3D cube. Uh, what I have from 3D system? Yes, yes. You know, for example, uh, uh, someone uh, broke my my toothbrush holder uh -huh. uh, at at the bathroom, and you know, I, I didn't want to go buy one. I just picked Leonardo, and in 10 minutes, I created a new new toothbrush holder. Right. And I, it but my question to you, Daniel. Okay, so how do you get the exact measurements? Did you use some something like uh, Capture One Two Three, or or did you actually by hand just you know eyeballing it and I, everything? I show you something very very cool. Go ahead. Uh, if you press uh, here the button X, X, then it scaled one by one. So ev anything you see here, so pressing X, you actually yes. see the model one, one by to one. one to one. And anything you have in this, because I have the head tracking, not just the more or less visualization, but one by one. Yeah. If I have this battle and and draw something in, uh, around, yeah. it will be scaled one by one, so it's it will be uh, perfectly fitting. So I, what I did, I just took took a tooth uh, a toothbrush, yeah. and I was putting the the real toothbrush into the virtual toothbrush holder and check if it can fit in. And with the 3D glasses, I saw it dried there. And, and so, it so you're saying because of these, these are 3D cameras, or what, what are these again? Well, actually, this is a quite uh, a revolutionary technology. We don't use any cameras for the, tech, for the tracking. We use line sensors in instead. Line sensors? Yes. What is that? Uh, you know, the camera has uh, pixels in a matrix. Yeah. But the line sensors has uh, pixels only one line of the, the, the pixels. Uh -huh. So uh, it's much less pixels, uh, but see, uh, with th those much uh, easier sensors, we, we could do the full six degrees of freedom position tracking in a calibrated space. So actually this was, you know, if we wouldn't uh, develop this technology, we would fail to, to make such a product. So that's why we the first who could, could go onto the market with such a product. So in other words, what you did is you took the real toothbrush and you developed the uh, the model for the, the, the cradle, right, for instance, yeah. right? Uh, for that toothbrush and then you were able to zoom in and see the tolerance yes. like in terms of whether or not it fits perfectly yes yes so with my eyes i could see the toothbrush holder with my eyes i could see the real toothbrush i just put it in the the real toothbrush into the virtual toothbrush holder uh -huh. and it and it worked together so in in 3d printing uh, when you want to create uh, stuff for you, uh, for yourself, for at home. This is anything like that. Uh, this is magnificent. You know, I I was curious about how things are matched, and you know, when I saw Capture One Two Three from Autodesk, I was like, okay, so you can bring the model into the uh, you know something broken, right? Yeah. Like a part or whatever or a gear. Uh, but but then I thought, okay, so how do you actually see on the computer the real one-to-one -one ratio kind of thing? But in your case, it's, it's actually like all hands-on and wow, that's amazing. It's really... <laughs> You know, when you when you check a design, yeah. uh, uh, today we are using 3D printing to, uh, a lot of times when, when you want to check if it looks nice or, or how it feels like. But here you can check it in, in a one by one scale, so and, and this helps a lot. But also you can measure. So if you if you have a, a measuring tape and and you want to make uh, real sizes, then also you can do it here. Now in terms of resolution, uh, can you? print uh, how how high is the resolution of the model that you let's say I'm, I'm creating a sculpture okay. and I want to get every single wrinkle and everything right on the face or whatever like a face uh, or a head of a person how do you get like what about particles such as hair and things like that can you do that on this software uh, well actually you asked about our other revolutionary technology uh, here I'm turning on the wireframe mode to show that to you sure. uh, and switching off stereo that it would be easier to to see uh, in the camera. So here you can see the three angles and we created the first algorithm in the world that can optimize the whole polygon structure in real time. So this means that if I'm pulling out material then you can see that polygons are automatically generated there. If I'm zooming in, pull out, zooming in, pull out, zooming in, pull out, zooming in, pull out, and zooming in, pull out. So you can go down even to the microns level uh, and when, I, when I'm zooming back, you can see that we were under of a pixel size already. It's like hair-like. But now, I mean, are there, um, is there like a library that you, your software supports in terms of, let's say, someone created, a, I don't know, hair? 
and then you can just download that into the software and then be able to kind of reuse it or something. Yeah, it. we are developing a very, very special library. Uh, at this moment, this is a, this is a top secret project, but, okay. but, but uh, we will launch this uh, very, very soon. Uh, How soon are you projecting? Uh, I think a couple of weeks, so it's oh, really? Re really, really soon. And, and um, so I think, uh, how do you say that in English? Your drop down your jaw? Jo you will, right, right, your, jo your jaw will drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I think. Wow. Looking forward, looking forward. Thank you so much, truly appreciate it. And once again, this is Daniel Ratai at Inside 3D Printing. And this is Renat Zarbaila for InnoMind.org reporting live at the exhibition at the Jacob Javits Center. Thank you so much. <laughs>